Okay, now before we start, we just want to lay a couple of the ground rules for the way this is going to be conducted. The governor will speak for about 30 to 40 minutes, and then there will be a half hour period for question and answer. And this question and answer period is to be uh, conducted in this manner. You see standing around the outside the uh, student senators with student senate armbands. Now these people have paper and pencil. All questions are, be, are to be submitted in writing to be answered. They'll go through uh, Mike Lewis. Now if any of you have any questions, they are to be, they are to be sent in, in the, during the first 20 minutes of the governor's talk so that they can be brought up to Mike and be screened in this manner. So if anybody has a question they'd like to ask the governor, they will have, have to get this handed in to one of the student senate ushers, and they will then be brought up to the stage. And this will have to be done the first 20 minutes of the speech. All you have to do is just raise your hand, and the, and the nearest usher will come. No noise to interrupt the, the governor's speech. Just raise your hand slightly, and one of them will come. Okay, now the governor is being brought here to be heard so you people can hear him. We do hope that you do remember this. Without any further ado, because he is the speaker, Governor George C. Wallace of Alabama. Thank you very much, Timothy, and students and members of the faculty, our Ball State teachers here at Muncie. It's a pleasure to be with you, and I appreciate you having invited me. And I hope that when I have concluded my remarks that we might have a little better understanding of what really the people of my state think and the philosophy and attitude that we espouse. And I want to say I've enjoyed my trip to your state, which is, of course, not my first trip here. I've been to this state many times. And, of course, this is the great Midwestern section of the country, which is truly the anchor of our country. And I came to this state in this preferential primary because I was concerned, as are many Americans, about the tendency of the growth towards centralized control over every phase and aspect of our lives. And I'm running in this preferential primary in your state on philosophy and attitude and principle and not personalities. I had offered, of course, to debate the principle in the matter, which is your distinguished governor. Your governor, of course, had a right not to debate, and I have not one unkind word to say about him nor any official in your state because I am a guest here in Indiana, and I think it would be very presumptuous of me to criticize anybody in your state. I don't think personalities are the issue. The issues are really the issue, and if I am as evil as they say I am, and the Civil Rights Bill is as good as they say it is, one confrontation before statewide television and radio to the intelligent people of Indiana would have made this very apparent. So I can't see why those who are always talking about what a good piece of legislation the so-called Civil Rights Bill is would mind debating this issue with an evil person such as myself. And I think we ought to have had a statewide television, radio, and debate. And had we done so, you would have been more informed about what this bill does. I'll try to stay off of controversial subjects, but... Uh, Everybody that I have seen in this state is uh, our intelligent, whichever you want to say. Our intelligent people. And that's all that I recommend. This civil rights bill turns your school system over to the federal government. And I'm not for that. I believe that you in this state should run your schools. So this matter of the so-called civil rights bill is an attack upon the property system in our country. You know, we hear all of these pickets and left-wingers and sign, and people have a right to picket. Let me tell you this. I have no objection to peaceful picketing. That's a part of the American heritage and the American system. But you know, when they talk about human rights above property rights, you know that sounds good, but let's just analyze it a moment. The only countries in the world where anybody has any human rights are in those nations where the ownership of private property is sacred under the law, such as in this country. 
Now, you know, all property has been taken in Russia and in China for the use of the public and the satellite countries. All private property has been taken for the public use, such as the Civil Rights Bill would take your father's business and use it for the public use. Yet there are no human rights in Russia and China, not a single one, and you know it. And the only places where you have human rights are in those nations that guarantee the ownership of private property. Hell, that you can't even read the Bible. The Supreme Court of the United States has held last year for the first time that just to read the Bible simply, not to, you don't have to listen to it, you can walk out and not listen to it, but to read the Bible in a public school is unconstitutional. They also rule that to say a simple prayer in a public school violates the Constitution of the United States. And if you will study the American, con within the American context of his American history, you will see that all the way from the Mayflower Compact until this moment, where it begun in the name of God, Amen, that the matter of the establishment of a state religion is not just the belief in God. I, believe, I don't think you should say that a man must be a Methodist or a Baptist or a Presbyterian or a Catholic or a Jew to hold off it. I'm against that myself. And I'm against the state establishing a religion. But the belief in God from whence all religions come from within the context of American history and those who founded it is not a religion. And as a result of that decision, did you know that the New York State School Board has ruled that no longer can you sing the fourth stanza of America in the public schools of New York? Did you ever think the time had come that it'd be unlawful, they say, to sing the fourth stanza of America in a public school because it talks about God? Did you know that under this present ruling, they've sent rulings down to orphanages built with federal funds that it's unlawful for the children and those who are in charge of these uh, 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 orphanages, and that's happening in New York, to kneel and say, now nah, uh, I'll lay me down to sleep and pray that I will away. You know the little prayer we used to say. That, you can't say that in an orphanage anymore. It's got federal funds involved. Did you know that the New York School Board has ruled as a result of this decision that you cannot anymore say in the public lunchrooms that they've said for years, God is great, God is good, God, we thank you for our food? That's unlawful now. I could answer that question. That's an easy one. Of course, you know, there are all, there are all sorts of uh, ways you arrive at 57 and 67 and 87 cents. Now, some people use the square system and some of the round. Now, I've seen, uh, of course, figures, well, I've seen figures that show otherwise. But let me tell you, regardless, there's no such thing as federal money, and never has been and never will be. Where does the money that the federal government get come from? It comes from the taxpayers' pocket of Indiana and of Alabama and of Michigan. They take it to Washington, throw a lot of it away down rat holes in many places, and then they... <laughs> And then they send some of it back to you and say you can have your own money back provided you conform to some whim and caprice of some bureaucrat in Washington, D.C. I have, I, have, I have no objection to the federal government carrying on its uh, functions of government. I am for the federal government. Nobody's against the federal government. Nobody came to its defense any quicker than the people of Alabama doing every war in which we have fought, except one, and that was 100 years ago. But of course... And, and they will do so again. But we do, do not think that when the federal government helps a program in Alabama, that that gives them a license to change the local traditions and customs of our people. Why should you take, and we paid nearly a billion dollars in income taxes last year. Now, you know, the last young fellow who asked me that question, he had some figures that showed we got $239 million back last year in Alabama. And yet our income taxes we paid last year were nearly 900 million. So I don't know whose figures you're talking about, but if we didn't take some of the money back that they take away from us down there in Washington, of course we couldn't operate a lot of things. Sure, federal taxes are high. If you ask your fathers and mothers about income taxes, why well, the states can't get enough money to run the functions of government, they ought to because of the high taxes. But that's no reason when they send you some money that they ought to tell you we won't pass a law that tells you you can't sell your home to somebody that you want to. Tell you what the greatest vote I got 
in Milwaukee was in the Polish-American, Serbian-American district of that city because they don't believe what these left-wing papers say themselves. <clears throat> Thank you, Governor. And me, and I hope God blesses everybody, regardless of his race, color, and race. Well, I'm surprised at the reception we got. Good.